Where officials are speaking about the federal charges against Columbia Gas and the 2018 gas explosions, let's listen in. Um, joined today with uh, Chief Vasque and Chief Moriarty and the Director of Health and Human Services is on the way, Martha Velez. Um, I'd like to begin by thanking U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling, FBI uh, Special Agent in Charge Joe Bonavontora. This helps. And Alyssa Chihuahua of the Inspector General's Office of uh, the Mass Department of Transportation and all the men and women who work for them who had a part to play in this. The events of September 13, 2018 uh, was a gas disaster with an impact that had a large number of human casualties. The loss of Lionel Rondon, the injuries both physical and mental to those impacted and the impact to our local economy of which today we are still recovering. The NTSB report, all of the investigations to date, all of the work that has been done have focused on what happened to the infrastructure. But I want to reiterate something that I've said all along, that this was not just an infrastructure accident. And because of this event, the human tragedy continues, but more importantly, that we understand exactly what happened to the infrastructure, we need to understand what happened to the people. Today, we are still facing the psychological impact to families, the economy, impact to businesses, and the sense that we may never be made whole for what happened to us and what was taken from us that day. That is what drives and has driven the call for actions against Columbia Gas. It will be a great day in the Merrimack Valley and in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts when Columbia Gas in Massachusetts no longer exists. And not just for us, but a tell to tell all operators that you can't put profits before safety. It's great that the U.S. Attorney got Columbia Gas to plead guilty in the acts that caused the gas explosion of September 13th, and this agreement will bring some much-needed solace to those affected. And I said this at the Senate hearing that was convened by Senator Markey and Senator Warren back in November 2018. A criminal charge, a criminal fine with probation, and the fact that Columbia Gas semesters will no longer exist is as close to what justice can look like for those of us affected. So again, I thank the U.S. Attorney's Office, the FBI, the NTSB, the work of the Department of Public Utilities. I know the Attorney General's Office is doing an investigation, Governor Baker and his staff for the continued work to hold Columbia Gas of Massachusetts and NYSource accountable for their actions. No amount of money could bring back young Lionel or fully put back together our lives. But every dime counts. And so, I would encourage the U.S. Attorney and the federal government to find a way for that $53 million fine and whatever proceeds that come from the sale to go directly to the victims of the gas explosions all across the communities. This can come in a direct credit for gas to the ratepayers or lump sum payments. We, the affected, have been let down by the claims process, and depending on what happens tomorrow at court, even the courts. At the very least, this criminal fine and the proceeds can help make them whole. I would also encourage that in the selecting of a federal monitor for the utility, that, uh, that an impacted, I'm gonna say this right, that an impacted non-industry civilian be assigned to work on the monitoring of the implementation of the safety Yeah, so that, that a civilian be assigned to work on the monitoring of the implementation of the safety recommendations of the NTSB and the applicable laws and regulations. We're not feeling very trustful of a room full of engineers trying to make things safer. So I would personally volunteer for that job, and if not appropriate, there are plenty of capable people who were impacted across the communities that would be willing to do this work. Again, I want to thank the first responders that came from far and wide and made a valiant effort to help us in our darkest hours. Governor Baker and his entire staff and the administration for their constant support throughout this process. Our federal delegation, 
and state delegation for standing alongside us the whole way. We will never be able to say enough about the support we have received. And most importantly, I want to thank the residents of the City of Lawrence, the Town of Andover, North Andover for their, their trust in their community leaders and their patience, their patience and partnership throughout this disaster. I'll take some questions. Yeah, I mean, I would say to you, and I'm hoping I'll get an opportunity to talk to the U.S. Attorney myself, I'm pretty sure we, we feel like we're victims. Um, and if that's a victim's fund, then I think we're made appropriate. Um, I think if you ask people that, that were affected that day, we'll tell you that they feel like they were the type of victim that could use some of the money from that fund. I'm not sure it's a stretch. Mayor, you've been saying for a long time now that what you really wanted was for Columbia Gas to be out of your community. Essentially today, that's what is uh, announced is, is at least the plan going forward. Can you just kind of give us your, your, your general reaction to, to that news? Yeah, I mean, I, I wish that I would never have to be at this microphone to begin with. Um, I wish that this thing never had happened in the, in the place. Um, and it's just a sad, I, I felt a deep sense of, fe of sadness that we even had to talk about breaking apart uh, a company or talk about making it stop from being in existence. Um, so I get no joy today in hearing this. I get no um, you know, uh, excitement about this, only in that when we talk about justice, we, these are the type of things that should happen when looking for justice. And I used to always use the example that if a kid in my community held up a liquor store and shot somebody and that person died, that that kid would go to jail for the rest of his life. They would make quick work of it. And so that this happened and uh, that these are criminal charges, and this I think that that's what justice looks like. And sometimes justice is not just a, it's not something we should take joy in. I think that, I think we'll find out whether, what happens. With, I think that this is the beginning of what justice is going to look like. And, you know, I think that there's some work to be done in, um, you know, at the courts tomorrow. Um, and in the end, you know, what, how people will feel about being made whole. And, you know, it's, I don't, I don't say that it's an easy thing to, to reach. The sense of feeling whole is not something that's touchable, definable, but like a lot of things in law, you, you know it when you feel it, you know you see it. I mean, the fact that no one person is held accountable, none of the executives or the company, yes, how does that sit with you? Listen, I, I've said from the beginning somebody should have lost their job at the very least. Um, my hope is that in this effort to break up the, the, uh, the organization that not everyone loses their job, because that, that would be an unfair hit across the, across the organization. Um, and that's not what we were talking about. We were talking about the people in the rooms that made the big decisions that those people should have lost their jobs. Uh, my hope is that this will be a transition to a new, um, you know, a new um, operator that has a better sense. And frankly, now they have some incentive to, to be more safe. Because if you don't, you get a criminal charges brought against you and you break up your company. So, you know, I've always said somebody should have lost their job, but you know, I mean, I remember when we asked at the, the Senate hearing, was some, "Would even people lose their money?" And they they said no. But you know, if they're not going to make if they're not going to profit from the sell of the of the of the organization, and they're not no longer be able to do work in um, in Massachusetts. I, I think that's probably as close as we can get. Mayor, can you kind of guarantee residents that they can now feel safe that Columbia Gas has nothing to do with the city anymore, and that people can rest easy now? Can you say? Sure, because we talk to people today, they're still scared. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think the gas industry has been hit in the, in, in Massachusetts, I and mean, I don't think anybody feels safe using gas anymore. Um, and maybe part of it, we were lulled into a sense of um, you know complacency with it. But you know, it's not a hundred percent safe to use. And so I think it became more apparent to people now. So people are always going to be a more care careful. I can't guarantee them that the people that put, you know. Because they're, they're breaking apart the company, I can't guarantee you that some people that were specifically involved aren't going to be there still um, when they come with a, new, um, with a new company. But what we, we know, we can definitely feel safer about is they know that there will be a reckoning if something like that happens. Um, that NTSB will do a report and find them guilty. And that one of many agencies, I, I know that this is the U.S. Attorney's Office, that the federal agency start, has started. My hope is that DPU will come with something. My hope is that the Attorney General's office will come with it. That there will be a reckoning for that. And um, uh, 
we could feel safe that we're not going to be left out in the cold. And I think that, that this is the first step of that. No, and that's why I think it's important that whatever structure, whoever's overseeing that transition, I mean, I, I'm living with this document as long as you guys had it, so I haven't read it A to Z. Um, I, I, I read most of the important part. Um, but whatever organ, whoever's doing that transition, they should have civilians. They should have ratepayers involved in that conversation. What we found during the recovery was that there was so much focus on the, um, the infrastructure that people were forgotten that it was always like a catch up to get people uh, the support that people needed. So if there's not a, a civilian that's not an engineer, that's not a, an industry person in the room monitoring the safety, the people will be missed. If those people aren't in the conversation as to how you change, how do you go from, you know, from Columbia Gas, Massachusetts to company X, if civilians aren't part of that, humans that are affected by that are not part of that, they will be missed in this equation. And the thing moves so fast and it's such a big operation, that it may be too late after something gets done for there to be a human adjustment for something that's so important to us. So, no, it doesn't even have to be public hearings. You just have to assign somebody who's a human <laughs> that has nothing to do with the infrastructure that their, their, their number one thing is to think about the human impact. We don't trust Columbia Gas to do that. Um, the bureaucracy of a new company, not, I don't really trust them either. And we would not definitely trust the bureaucracy of, a go of the government, even my government, to do that. So what I'm saying is you need a body, a person who's just a, an, unaffect, an affected person by the, by the Columbia gas crisis um, in the room just thinking about the human impact. And I think that, that when that's not there, you make big mistakes. So I don't know how long it's going to take, but if it, even just that saying, hey, this is taking too long, <laughs> you know, um, the ambivalence of, of certainty, yeah, that, that's a redundant, the ambivalence of, 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 of when it's going to start and when it's going to end. Um, would be like the first thing that somebody that's not committed to the, um, the industry would say, hey, why is this taking so long? Mayor, going back to the day the explosions happened and everything that's happened since, you've heard from a lot of people, what were some of the emotions you felt today when the news came down? Yeah, you know, it's, it's like I said, it, there's no joy here. You know, this is, we wish it never happened. And so today I think what we feel is, um, you know, that this is just another step into making us a little bit more whole. You know, everybody was getting themselves psychologically ready for tomorrow's hearing. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit, um, you know, it's a little jarring because we didn't expect it. Um, I, I think we, we, you know, it would have been great to have had a conversation. You know, I know there's illegal matters and the courts are involved and stuff like that and maybe it's not appropriate. Um, but it's uh, another reason why you have to have non-affected people, you know, people involved in these processes because it is a little jarring to send your kid to school to this morning in the affected area. When you come home, you're going to watch all this stuff on TV. This, this is, this is a, something that, that it's um, emotionally jarring. How often are you hearing from residents to this day on how they've been impacted by everything that happened back then? I think we hear about it every time something like this comes up. I mean, you, you, you can't forget that, um, you know, this is not just September uh, 13th. This was uh, uh, an over, um, you know, we had a gas incident uh, a couple months ago. Um, we've had issues with pipes in the ground. Um, they have been working around, around the, the, this community. So it's not as if Columbia Gas has not been an, impo a, an active part of our lives every day anyway. So anytime somebody sees the gas company in, the hole, in a hole in the ground, you know, it's, it's, it's jarring. People get concerned right away or in front of somebody's house, even just to connect a new service. It, it, has, it is emotionally charged. Last question. So, you know, behind selling Columbia gas, it doesn't sound like it's enough. Listen, I got to tell you, it's, it's, I don't know if there's a number out there that makes it enough. I just think that I've gone through the, I, I went personally through the claims process. It did make me feel like I was trying to steal something from them, even though they stole something from me. And then you go through this process with the class action, you have all these attorneys getting paid $40,000 a day. And I still had to make the, I, I didn't do it, but people had to make the case for them. And that made them feel like you were stealing again, even though it was stolen, it was, something was stolen from you. So yeah, I do feel a little bit like, you know, that this isn't enough, especially since I have to sell somebody that if you're gonna get $54 million, maybe the people that mostly affected should get, get that money. 
Don't give it to Dan Rivera if you don't want. That's fine. I, I've been affected and I have a family affected. I'm not, I'm not saying that I want to be enriched by it. I just know that it's I just don't know. Hey, are you saying that now, you know, you, you've been at odds with this company for 18 months now. Yeah. Is today the day you can say good riddance to Columbia Gas? Yeah. Well, I, I think the day we can name the name of the new company, we can say that. Yeah, but this is the first step so we can say good riddance. What would you like to see in the courts tomorrow? Tomorrow, I hope that the judge will lessen the amount of money that the attorneys are taking. Um, I hope that they would just throw away all this process of having to register. We know everyone who was impacted. That's a known group of people. We've been at this since September of 2018. To make them go through this claims process, to me, I think was, was, um, was uh, an, a trick to keep people out of getting the money. But I go back, again, a family in Lawrence, um, you know, have, has like, I, the stat is escaping me right now, but the, the per capita income for the city is so low. And we're going to give these attorneys who did not work every day, 24 hours a day for this, for this case, $40,000 a day? It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm hoping the judge will see the, the unfairness in that. And I'm hoping the judge will also say, hey, it doesn't matter whether or not you signed up, you should get some of this class action dollars. Um, because again, the people who are least capable of doing those are the people that were most impacted. And frankly, the interaction is, prove to me how much, you, how much you, you're worth. And I think there's a number out there that the judge can say, everybody should get at least this much amount of money. Um, and then those who were impacted more really, it's not my job, I'm not the judge. But if I had that job, I would take it a little bit more seriously than giving $40,000 to the attorneys and then making everybody get in line, go through this whole process again, like the, the, um, the claims process again. And, um, and, you know, and having to, to justify, you know, um, the amount of money you got. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to let a lot of people, I'll take a couple more, but it takes a lot of people, it's going to make a lot of people feel again that another bureaucracy has let them down. So this is a great news. And I, again, I applaud the U.S. Attorney. He, he did a thing that we all have wanted him to do, everybody else to do, which is break apart this company. But to put in the back $54 million is a lot of poor people in Lawrence that were affected by this, a lot of businesses affected by this that, would, that could use that money.